Apple reported fiscal first quarter results on January 28, 2021, but the historic quarter took a back seat to the crazy trading activity in GameStop, AMC Entertainment, and other heavily shorted names. But once the dust settles, investor attention should shift back to trillion dollar tech names and investors will debate the Apple stock analysis. Let's check out Apple Stock Analysis, March 2021. Number 6. Largest Quarter in History Apple earned $1.68 a share on sales of $111.44 billion in its fiscal first quarter ended December 26. Analysts had predicted earnings of $1.41 a share on sales of $103.28 billion. On a year-over-year -year basis, Apple earnings rose 34%, while sales climbed 21%. Apple's fiscal first quarter earnings report was highlighted by revenue topping $100 billion in a three-month period for the first time ever. Specifically, Revenue rose 21% year-over-year to $111.439 billion. Sales of products rose from $79.104 billion in the same quarter last year to $95.678 billion. By category, iPhone revenue was up 17% year-over-year to $65.6 billion. Mac revenue was up 21% to $8.68 billion iPad revenue was up 41% to $8.44 billion, and others, i.e. earphones, watches, were up 29% to $12.97 billion. Services, a key component of the bullish view on whether the Apple stock is a good buy now given its hefty margins, saw its revenue rise 24% from a year ago to $15.76 billion. Included in this segment are sales generated from the App Store, Apple Music, TV Plus sales, licensing fees paid by Google, warranties, and others. One would assume that a record-setting quarter would support bulls in the Apple stock buy or sell debate, but such was not the case. Number 5. Apple Stock Analysis – iPhone Offers Path to $3 Trillion Valuation Apple has overtaken Amazon to become the world's most valuable brand for the first time in five years, according to a global report. The value of the technology giant's brand has climbed 87% in the past year to $263.4 billion. The Brand Finance Global 500 2021 Index found the rise was down to Apple's diversification strategy, which has seen the company expand into digital and subscription services and potentially into electric cars in the future. Not even a global pandemic could slow down Apple's new iPhone 12 sales. In fact, Apple exceeded even the most bullish iPhone sales estimates, especially in China, where sales rose 57% year over year. According to at least one analyst, Apple's iPhone 12 has the potential to outsell the record high 231 million iPhone units that were sold in fiscal 2015. If sustainable, there is no reason to believe it isn't. Apple's potential iPhone 12 super cycle in the new G5 category would help lift Apple's valuation above and beyond the 3 trillion mark. Number 4. Overlooked Quarter Takeaways Apple's quarter shows that it managed to accelerate its active device installed base from 7% last year to 10%, while its services monetization rose at the fastest pace in recent memory. As expected, customer loyalty remained a strong point as it is not only retaining record high customers but selling new products like watches to existing hardware owners. According to Morgan Stanley analysts, these favorable catalysts should sustain a multi-year revenue compound and annual growth rate of 10% through 2025. The research firm is modeling Apple's full-year 2021 earnings per share to rise by 6% and another 8% in 2022. Encouragingly, both these outlooks are materially above what other Wall Street analysts are expecting. 
Perhaps being overlooked by investors following Apple's report is the company's surprise gross margin improvement. For the past two to three years, Apple's gross margins hovered roughly between 37.5 and 38.5%. But in the reported quarter, gross margin moved notably higher to 39.8%. Apple may have a path to perhaps sustain 39 to 40% margins over the near term, and this would help lift earnings by default. Apple also continued its stock buyback program and repurchased 20 million shares of its own stock for a total of $24 billion. The company also returned $3.6 billion to investors in the form of dividends. Despite what seems like a large amount of shareholder-friendly activity, the company still grew its cash hoard from $192 billion in the prior quarter to just shy of $196 billion. Number 3. AAPL Stock Analysis – Why the Sell-Off? Since the bounce back from the lows of the coronavirus stock market crash, Apple stock has been outperforming the broader market. Apple stock has an IBD relative strength rating of 67 out of 99. That means it has outperformed 67% of stocks over the past 12 months. Apple stock has an IBD composite rating of 82 out of 99, according to the IBD stock checkup tool. IBD's composite rating combines five separate proprietary ratings of fundamental and technical performance into one easy-to-use rating. The best growth stocks have a composite rating of 90 or better. The latest Apple share news and earnings report resulted in the stock losing around 3% of the following trade session. So, what contributed to the weakness? Some are attributing the decline to Apple's management team, not providing a revenue forecast for the coming quarter. Such was the norm throughout most of Apple's history, but was not the case to kick off the new fiscal year. Management also noted that its margin-rich and closely watched services business faces a difficult year-over-year -year comparison moving forward. Apple also had an opportunity to change the narrative in the Apple shares buy or sell debate by confirming if it has any intention to enter the auto market. Company CEO Tim Cook faced multiple questions from street analysts asking him to confirm or deny reports. Number 2. Apple Opportunities for Growth With the iPhone business maturing, investors are wondering what the next big growth driver will be for Apple stock. Lately, two businesses have given Apple's sales and profits a boost, services and wearable. In the December quarter, Apple services revenue rose 24% to $15.8 billion. Services include the Apple Store, Apple Care, iCloud, Apple Pay, Apple Music, Apple TV+, Apple Arcade, and other offerings. However, Apple is facing antitrust scrutiny in the U.S. and Europe for its App Store policies, including a 30% commission fee. On November 18th, Apple cut its commission rate to 15% for small developers, possibly to appease regulators. But Apple stock trended down in the days after that news. Meanwhile, Apple's wearable home and accessories unit saw sales increase 30% to nearly $13 billion in the December quarter. This unit includes wearable like the Apple Watch, AirPods wireless earbuds, and Beats headphones. It also contains the Apple HomePod wireless speaker and other miscellaneous gadgets. More recently, speculation has risen that Apple is looking to make a self-driving electric car. Those rumors picked up steam in January when Hyundai reported early discussions with Apple about a car partnership. Late February 2nd, Bloomberg reported that Apple plans to invest $3.6 billion in Kia Motors as part of collaboration with the South Korean car maker on electric vehicles. Apple plans to build Apple cars at Kia's U.S. factory in Georgia starting in 2024, the report said. Hyundai owns a minority stake in Kia. Apple stock dipped on the news. Most recently, on February 5th, Bloomberg reported that Apple has paused discussions with Hyundai and Kia. Number 1. Conclusion Hold Apple Stock 
The world's largest technology company, Apple, has been a household name ever since the 1980s. Today, it's the business behind some of the biggest products on the market. From the iPhone and iPad to the world's original smartwatch, it's no surprise that Apple became the first company to be worth $1 trillion. Do let us know in the comment if you're an Apple lover or not. What do you think of its stock? Please subscribe to the Stock Advisor. Thanks for watching.